Okay, so this is the 2017 exam and it's the finance section. So the first question of this section is question 17. So the value of the reducing balance loan in dollars after n months can be modelled by the recurrence relation. So a recurrence relation is when they state a VO and a VN plus one rule. So the value after five months, so the easiest way is to do it on the calculator. So we press the VO and you press enter and it will come up here. Then on your next line, if you press times, it'll say answer here. And then you write times and use the formula, which is times 1.003 minus 400, you press enter. So this is the first month. And then if you keep pressing enter, you'll get the second, the third, and the fourth, and there's the fifth month. So the fifth month, the value of the loan after five months is 24380, which up here is A. Sorry, with the well, this question here, I forgot to press record. But anyway, we test out all these um, formulas. We test six to see if we get 22. We only got it on this D one. And I said, you should move on from this. And if at the time you've got time at the end to check, check E to make sure that gives a wrong answer too, because that's like a different way of checking. All right, let's do the next one. Shirley would like to purchase a new home and she will establish a loan for 225,000 and the interest charged at a rate of 3.6 per annum compounding monthly. So each month Shirley will pay only the interest. So in this case, we have an interest only loan. Okay, so with an interest only loan, the amount owing, it will always remain the same. Okay, so the interest charged on an interest only loan will be the same as the payment. And that's why it never drops, because you only ever pay the interest. So after three years, when they ask um, how much does Shirley owe, well, she owes the same amount. She's only paid interest, so she hasn't dropped any of the loan. So there's C. So we'll just move on to the next question. So um, let VN be the value of Shirley loan in dollars after months. So they want a month formula and the recurrence relation model value for this. So we have an interest only um, loan and we want the recurrence relation. So go and look at the table I gave you um, and it will show you how to write that. Okay, so here's the part of the table I'm talking about. We've got interest only loan um, section and you want this part here. So when you're writing the recurrence relation, you need the VO, so the principal of the loan. So we can see they're all that, VO, so that's okay. And the next we want to do is we're going to see 1 plus R over PPY over 100. And that'll be up here. But we'll also have minus D. And minus D we work out by doing the same. So if we have a look up here. So if I was working out the R, it would be 1 plus the rate per annum, which is 3.6 over 12, because it's monthly, over 100. And so that ends up being 1.003. So there we're going to look, we can cross out anyone that doesn't have that. And we need also need the minus D part. And D's worked out by doing um, the rate divided by the PPY, which is 12 over 100 times the VO. So when you do that, you get six, seven, five. So the only one mimicking this relationship is here. So $675 is added as interest, but then we take it away because we make the payment. So there's that answer. Okay, question 21, a printer is purchased for 680. After four years, the printer has a value of 125. On average, 19, 20 pages were printed during these four years. 
So the value of the printer was depreciated using unit cost depreciation method. And the depreciation in the value of the printer per page printed is closest to. So if you go to your summary table, and I've found the bit, so we're looking for unit cost depreciation. And you can see D is what we're looking for, the cost per unit use. And over here, I've written how you find D. So you put the amount depreciated per period. So I'm going to say it's dropped. So it's gone from 680. Um, and if I minus 125, that will give me this amount that it's depreciated. And it's depreciated over that, over the four years. But each year it did 900, 1920 copies. So if you do this calculation, so six in work it out, and it should be 0 0.07. So it's seven cents. So we get that answer there. Okay, question 22, consider the graph below. The graph could show the value of, so I'm gonna first say, look, it is depreciating, it's going down, so it's depreciating, and it's got a curved. So it would not be flat rate. Flat rate would be a straight line, so I'm gonna cut that one out. Um, it's not a compound interest investment, that would be growing, that would go up. Um, a perpetuity earning 6%, Perpetuities remain the same, so if it was graphed, it would be a straight line, so it's definitely not that. And an annuity investment with additional payments, so they're to the initial investment. So they're making extra payments into this thing, so it's a growth, so really the only one left is B. And if you have a look at it, if you go from 7,000 7, down to that, that is a drop of um, 6%. And if you tested that one to there, that's a drop of 6%. So it is dropping with that. That could be maybe something you test later if you have time to go back and check. Otherwise, it was pretty quick to get that answer. Okay, <clears throat> question 23. Four lines of the amortization table for annuity investment are shown. The interest rate for this investment remains constant, but the payment payment value may vary so they're sort of giving you a clue there that it could be different even though they've all said hey 100 in the other three the balance of the investment after payment number two 20 sorry is 7500 so we can see that they gave us it there the value of payment 20 is closest to so we need to work this out and they've just told us that it could be different so we're going to have a look so to work out this is an investment so to work out how much the payment is if we knew what the principal addition is so the principal addition is what was added to the loan to get it up to the new balance so if you do the um the new balance minus the balance before um we should get the what the principal addition so what was essentially added to the account so seven five thousand minus seven two three three point eight three equals okay equals two hundred sixty six seventeen and so we've got that there so the payment if that's how much added but included in this 266.17, that was essentially made up of your payment that you added or the inv whoever is investing plus the interest. Okay, so we want, that's the question. We need that amount. So if we know this, we just need to, we must be able to get this one here. We need to get this interest there and we'll minus it from this this and that will tell us the payment so we need to work out the interest so we're going to work out the interest okay so you can work out the interest because we can work out the rate using previous months so the way they got this interest here was they would have said the rate times the balance before 
um, gave you the 27.91. So if the rate is what I want to know, but I know the balance before was 6977.50 and that was 27.91. So the rate essentially is going to equal 27.91 divided by 69, oops, 77.50. So if you work out that rate, it ends up being 0 0.004. Okay, so that's the rate. So to get this, this interest, I'm going to do 0 0.004 times the balance before, which is here. So 7233.83. So when you do that, you get 28.94. So we know that the interest was 28.94. So the payment, therefore the payment must equal going up here, the 26617 minus the interest, which was 28.94 which ends up being approximately uh, 237, which is this answer here. Okay, for question 24, Xavier borrowed 240,000 to pay um, a house. For the first 10 years of the loan, the rate was 4.35 per annum compounding monthly. So this is compound, so it means we can use finance over. And he made a monthly payment of 1,800. After 10 years, the interest rate changed. If Saviour now makes monthly payments of 2,000, he could repay the loan in a further five years. The new annual interest rate for Xavier's loan is closest to. So whenever you have one of these changed scenarios it's changing halfway remember i said always do the first part get the scenario of what's going and then apply the second part so i'm going to do the first part on finance solver so we've got 10 years of the loan and it's monthly so 10 times 12. the interest rate for this part is 4.35 the pv he borrowed 240,000, so it's the bank gave it to him so it's a positive um, payments, he's making payments, so he's giving back 1800 each month. FV, that's what I want to know. After the 10 years, I want to know how much is still left on the loan. So I'm going to put the question on that. And PPY is 12, and so CPY is 12 because it's monthly. So let's, you pop that into Finance Solver, and we're going to get an answer here. Okay, so we get... And the final value of negative, that's because we still owe the bank 108219 16 So this is what we still owe the bank. So that's going to become our new borrow amount or PV for the next scenario. So if we look at the next, the next scenario over here, Xavier makes monthly payments of 2000 so that's changed. And he's going to repay the loan in a further five years. So in five years, he thinks he's going to finish this loan off. So, and interest is the question. So this has got to be the one I'm going to have the box on. So PV, that's going to be his, um, that this loan amount. So I put, sorry, here. Yeah. Um, uh, it's borrow, it's, you're going to pretend that he's borrowing it again. So you go, one, it's a positive. So 18219.16. The payments, he's got new payments, so we're putting negative 2000, he's giving back to the bank. FV is going to be zero because he's paying it, we're gonna, they say he's going to have it repaid off. And PPY is still 12, and CPY equals 12. So we pop that into Finance Solver to get the interest. Okay, and I got four. 0.14 in there so it's closest to b 4.1 percent okay so that's the multi-choice part done